this is a steam boiler uh, so um, when you deal with steam you have to adapt to existing conditions and steam gets piped a little differently than other boilers a steam system you want to keep the steam dry you don't want too much water in the steam so when it comes up you'd like it as a vapor a dry vapor uh, and for this re reason we put a lot of drains and pitch everything if you don't pitch it properly it could bang um, in different areas but um, <clears throat> here's our union here's our T this T is flipped up right so that way uh, the dry steam can go up and if there's any condensate it will go down this pitched equalizer and this equalizer goes down to our Hartford loop which is over here so the um, the equalizers, the function of the equalizer is to keep the pressure the same in the return pipe as it is in the supply. So that's the purpose of that. Um, and so uh, here we come down to our Hartford loop. And this T right here, this is a critical measurement. This T should be two inches below the water line. Um, there's a marked water line here. And this allows the um, the boiler to the condensate to replenish the boiler water so it, it's a constant cycle of evaporation condensation evaporation condensation and the key to a successful uh, single pipe steam system is really in the venting so it's imperative upon replacing any steam boiler that you also replace the steam vents on the, each radiator not just the radiators but the mains themselves so this this boiler has two mains, two main vents, and about uh, seven or eight radiators that uh, that all the vents are have uh, have been replaced on them, and that's really a key and often overlooked uh, concept in steam heating. Basically, a lot of time the reason why it's overlooked so much is because of the cost of the vents. The vents are almost thirty dollars a piece. So if you have, you know, eight radiators in your house, you know, you're looking at $240 plus tax. So um, that's why a lot of times they get omitted. So uh, here's our, our water makeup. And this is normally off. If this gets left on, it will flood the house right through the vents. Um, a backflow preventer is not really required here <clears throat> because it doesn't have an automatic feeder. Um, basically the code is is that whenever you have an automatic feeder you need a backflow pre preventer but I put them in anyway I, I think it's a good idea and I think I believe that it should be code anyway <clears throat> because if somebody treats their boilers with chemicals and tries to fill the boiler at the same time if the water main was shut off it's gonna suck the chemicals back into the system um, so I, I'm a firm believer in having what uh, backflow preventers even if it has a isolation valve and uh, so that's it this is our steam header and our condensate return and um, I always put a drain on these these get filthy over time and sometimes they need prodding with like a, a coat hanger to clear any clogs so um, I always leave a connection there some some boiler installations we even put a, a strainer in them uh, but typically not in a single residential application here's our low water cutoff this boiler does not have an auto feed, so when this low water cutoff gets tripped, it just basically interrupts the cycle of firing to the boiler. And here's our pressure troll. This operates the pressure. Again, you don't want you don't want high pressure on a single pipe residential steam system. You want very low pressure, so half a pound is plenty. The key is in the venting, not in the pressure. I'm going to say that again. The key to successful one pipe steam pipe uh, system is in the venting not pressure so keep these pressure gauges way down low on the steam boilers if a single pipe residential use here's our transformer now this boiler uh, a few years ago I put the same boiler right next to it over here um, however the new boiler has been updated and instead of having a standing pilot it now has electronic ignition and this also was part of this this project to install this water heater and it's a 50 gallon short I, I just got it in there it was really a tight installation that's eight inch flue pipe here and 
um, that's six inch directly into the chimney for the heating boiler. And this uh, for this for this job we did we ran all new gas piping from the meter all the way to the two new appliances. And right here is a test rig. So when the inspector comes here, well he already came and left. Um, I had a gauge here right in this port and with three pounds of pressure on it. But I also had this gas cock and um, this gas cock off as well as another one I installed <clears throat> when I cut into the main. Here's our inspector's signature. Here's a drip leg and uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching my videos. Bye-bye.